Hey, it's Neil with Rare Blog Phase again, um, doing a tutorial on solid modeling for RepRap. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do our first actual printable object. Um, this one is going to be a wine glass. If you go to Thingiverse and look at wine glass, you'll see there's two or three out there, but this really only takes a quite maybe less than five minutes to do. It's really easy. Um, it also gives us an excuse to actually use the rotational extrusion tool. So let's go ahead. First thing to remember is with the uh, rotational extrusion tool that it's going to actually extrude around the z-axis. So it's best to go ahead and switch your view so that you have the x on the bottom and z going up. Um, before we start drawing we need to sort of accept some of the limitations that come with the RepRap pr style printers. Um, not everyone has the same limitations, but generally the good rule of thumb is RepRap printers do not like a less than 45 degree incline. It likes steep inclines. It doesn't like very shallow inclines. So uh, let's say for instance it would like a 45 degree incline like this one. It would not so much like this incline. And it would definitely not like an incline like this. This would cause fail prints. But a incline that steep it would just take and not have any issues whatsoever. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start this at 10 millimeters out. Oh, let's go ahead and make it bigger. Let's go ahead and say 15 millimeters out for the base of our coke. So we need a big wine glass. Okay, so 15 millimeters out for the base. Let's go ahead and go into 10 for the bottom. Go at a 45 degree incline. Um, I usually try to keep everything about a centimeter thick for the basis of stuff. And then go in. Now you, for rotational extrusion, if you want it to actually not have a hole in the bottom, you have to go to the um, X, Y, zero, Z, wherever you're at. Then you go up, however tall you want it to be. We only want to have enough room to stick our fingers under the lid, so there. Now, another thing, Skeen Forge does not particularly like it when you make an infinitely sharp point. I, I know I'm not describing it well, but if I were to just go from a 45 degree incline up like this, I would end up getting scheme forge errors at the um, 15 millimeter mark. So to fix that, you just go over one millimeter, and that's that's enough that it'll smooth it out. And also, that gives us an excuse to make it a little bit steeper. So we're going to go ahead and make this cup 45 millimeters. Uh, 40 millimeters tall. That looks pretty huge there. And we're going to make it 5 millimeters thick. They probably go 2 millimeters. Let's go 2 millimeters. That'll be prettier. 2 millimeters thick. Let's go down here. This is going to have thin walls. Now, Again, we can pretty much do whatever way we want. We could just go straight out like that, and that would be fine. Um, but you know what? We're we're going to go ahead and make this multi. Uh, let's go there, and then there. I don't think I did anything special there. But anyway, so we have our thick base. We have walls. We don't have anything incredibly sharp. That right there will chafer these up here, I think the outside one might, but the ins uh, top one probably won't. So, let's go ahead and shut this down. Select the item. Do a rotational extrusion. 360 degrees for rotation. Wow, that's sharp. So, let's start chaffering. Um, again, chaffering you don't have to do it. I like to do it. I just think it looks prettier. So when you do chaffering, you have to actually select the edges. As I said earlier, chaffer, check the edge. Sure. So that one worked. Not all these are going to chaffer. Because what happens is this right here is probably not going to want to chaffer because two millimeter would take off a whole bunch of material. It's probably not going to like that. See? Doesn't like that. Don't know if 
fiddles. Let's try this over here. Try the solid. That one might actually work. Yep, that worked. Yeah, that's actually pretty. So I'll go ahead and chafer this one also. Now since I made that so thick there, or so thin, let's go ahead and make this a four radius. So actually we thicken that up by making a wider radius. Ah, this is actually turning out being pretty. Now I don't know if you noticed the way I moved up like that. This is the way I tend to move up, is I zoom out and zoom in. It makes it real easy to move to different places on your model. So, on this one, we're going to do a round one again. Move that to two. This one on top. It's not going to want to let us do anything but a solid. Okay, let's go ahead and chafer the inside edge. Make it smooth, make the inside real work. Nope, it doesn't like that either, so. It's just not even going to allow us to shape that in there. But I think this is quite a pretty little cup. So let's see if it will scheme forge, which is the final test of anything, whether it's going to print or not. Let's call this cup. SDL. Let's put it as SDL file. Sure. So let's see whether we can get this to. Okay, if we've made a mistake in our design, in some way it's just not printable at all, you will get errors when you skin forge it. And the errors will actually show up on a Z axis. So it'll say at 15 millimeters up, you have something that makes no sense, or 10 millimeters up, or 5 millimeters up. And it's always good to do this before you upload anything to Thingiverse or anywhere else because what will happen is sometimes it will be just a little thing that just doesn't make sense to scheme for. So you can go in, usually a chafer will fix it or just a slight alteration of the design. So um, I'll go ahead and pause this so you don't have to sit there and wait for the 20 minutes for Skeen Forge. Well that was quick, it took almost a minute. So let's go ahead and see if everything's Skeen Forge correct. Raft, base, Handle. Wow, that's a skinny handle. And it's quite thin. This would, with no infill, it would be interesting to see if this actually printed well. It's, all you really have is two lines, 45 degree angle. This would be a pretty extreme print. But it would be interesting to see whether it worked or not. Love the fact it has a point on the tip. So, um, the next one we'll probably do will be just one more cup, like a shot glass, using boon line logic, and then we'll probably move on to something that's a little more different, a little more interesting. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Have a good day.